G'day, welcome to Matt's workshop. This is just a short video to look at the calibration of the X and Y axis on the CO2 laser. Sometimes you might cut things out and they don't come out to the right ratio, so you want to cut out a 10 centimeter square, but it comes out as an oblong or a rectangle. You might want to cut a circle, but your laser machine is cutting it as an ellipse. And so what I'm going to do is show you how to calibrate the X and Y axis to get the accuracy for the cuts that you're making. And then what I'll do is show you how to use the same procedure to refer it to your rotary device. Just in case the y-axis motor for your machine is a little bit different with the steps for your rotary device. The controller that I'm using for this demonstration is the Ruida controller. This one is the 6445. But you can also use the same settings for other Ruida controllers. If you have a different controller, just refer to your user manual for the calibration of your x and y-axis. I hope you find this useful. So what we need to do to calibrate the X and Y axis is open RD Works and draw a square. And make this square 100 millimeters by 100 millimeters. And now cut this out of a piece of material. Now mark at the X and Y axis and we're going to measure those. So I measure the x-axis and it is 110 millimetres and we measure the y-axis and it is 90 millimetres. So now we go back to RD Works and change some settings. So back in RD Works we've got our 100 millimetres square. We go to File, Vendor Settings, enter the password RD8888, press Enter. Now it's a good idea to back any settings up first and you can see how to back up in a previous video that I've done. But uh, basically you can read the information from the controller board and you can press save and back those settings up to start with. After you've backed up we've got the step length here of 8.1 and this is for the X axis so what we do is press the button next to it and we look at the graph length. So the graph length of the where we cut out was 100 millimeters but it measured 110 so we enter 110 there at the measured length and say OK and that's changed the settings there and now we need to do the same for the y-axis so the step length for the y-axis we press the button and the graph length was 100 but we actually only measured 90 millimeters and we enter that value in there and say OK after we've done this, we write that to the controller and now we're ready to do the same test again. So we've got a 100 millimeter square and we're gonna cut it out and measure it to check. There's our X axis and our Y axis and we'll measure that. And we're at 100 millimeters and 100 millimeters. So that's the calibration corrected. So once you've got the X and Y axis measuring correctly and it's calibrated, it's a good idea to back up your vendor settings. So go into vendor settings, read the information from the controller and save those settings somewhere. So we could call them new settings and save that file. That way if you ever had to go back to these settings, you could always open the file, load them in and write them back to the controller. A way that you could test this on a cylindrical object in a rotary device would be to then change this to something a little bit smaller. So we go 20 millimeters by 20 millimeters and we cut this out of a piece of masking tape that's attached to the cylindrical object and then peel that tape off and measure it. And let's try that now. So I've got a glass jar with some masking tape and we just peel that tape off and then just using the tape we should mark the x and y axis but you can just measure each axis on a ruler to make sure that it's accurate and if it's inaccurate you can change the settings back in RD Works. So if this 20 millimeter square measured up incorrectly when it cut out then what you would do is go back into the vendor settings and where it says step length with the measuring length and the graph length you would enter 20 millimeters as your graph length and the measuring length of whatever that axis measured up to and press OK. So just remember if you make any changes here you need to write those to the controller and then if you wanted to make a backup of those settings press the save button and save that file. So thanks for visiting Matt's workshop. 
Hope this has been of some help to you guys. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to leave some comments in the description below. And until next time, take care. Cheers.